Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about reverse engineering another photographer's photo. Because if you could reverse engineer it, it will help you improve your photography. Every now and then I'll get an email from someone asking me to look at another photographer's work and they're asking me, do I know how that photographer might have captured that type of image or what they used to do that? Because they're very intrigued by that photographer's work. Well, actually, it's not that difficult to figure out. Um, it's called reverse engineering a photo. You really just look at the photo and you could get an idea of what focal length they use sometimes. You could get an idea of what lighting they used. And if you use a website, 500, like 500px, that often will list the equipment used and the exposure used to capture that shot, you'll know exactly what they used. Now, for example, I have 500px up now. I do have a paid membership to 500px. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, although I don't really use it anymore. It's kind of a waste of money. But I do like the site. Um, you could join for free um, and you could look at everyone's images and it really will help you. And I'm going to uh, tell you how you could go about uh, reverse engineering a shot. So I have 500px website up here and let's just look at this. You know, you can go through and just look and see. You could tell there's like beautiful photography here. Lots of great photography. And just pick an image. I'll pick the image of the dog. And this is taken by a photographer, Elke Vogel slang saying, I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing the name. I don't know this person personally, but just clicking on the image, I could see that uh, she used a Fujifilm X-T3 with a Fujifilm 16 to 55 millimeter f2.8 lens. She was at 38.8 millimeters with an exposure of f11, one eight hundredth of a second ISO 500. So she's at one eight hundredth of a second. So that's very fast. So you might think she's not using flashes. So we could zoom into the image and take a close look at the eyes of, in this case, the dog, or if it's a model, look at the model's eyes or whatever, and you'll get an idea of the light. And you can see right here, there's a round light source directly in front of the dog up a little bit high. Now it doesn't have edges on it. So I don't think it's an octobox. It looks like it's a beauty dish. Also to the side, to the photographer's left, it looks like there's a reflector over here as well. So it's really a single light on the dog with a reflector to camera left. And again, if you look and you look at the background, the background is pure white. So she likely had lights on the background as well. And you could also deduce, since, since she was at 1 800th of a second, she was shooting with a high speed sync because Typically, you wouldn't be able to shoot that fast of a shutter speed um, with flashes. But obviously, was some type of flash. Could have been a constant light source, but I really think it was some type of flash. And you could get an idea just then what they used. And then with the information provided here, we know exactly what camera she used, what lens she used, and what focal length she shot at. Now, it is up to the photographer to allow this information to show. So um, you may find you really compelled, intrigued by an image and click on it and you won't see any camera info. And that's really up to the photographer whether they want that to show on 500px. I found probably more than half of the photographers will allow the equipment and exposure info to show. So that's just, you know, really helps you out in the long run. Now, the, what prompted me to do this video was a person emailed me and they wanted me to talk about the photography of Sean Archer specifically. And you can see Sean Archer is a very, very established and award-winning photographer, portrait photographer, speaker, educator, two-time winner of Best of Russia, Russia. He's an ambassador for Olympus and Skylum software. And if you look through, you can see he's a portrait photographer and he mainly looks like exclusively takes photos of women. And if you just click on an image, and we look at the equipment, you can see on this one, he used a Sony Alpha A7 II, uh, uh, Sony 90 millimeter macro, F2.8 macro lens. He was at, of 
course, 90 millimeters. F a 3.2, 1 1 60th of a second, ISO 500. And if you zoom in to the image and take a close look at the model's eyes, it looks like it was a window. So it looks like it was existing light. You could see the just the way it is. It looks like it was a window. And I've noticed that with most of his uh, photography, um, if you take a look, it's existing light. There's this image. Uh, this was with a Canon uh, EOS 6D. 85 millimeter f1.2 lens. It was shot at f2 1 1 60th of a second with an ISO of 1600, so a pretty high ISO. And if we zoom in on her eyes, you could see it's a window. You would see again a window, so existing light. You could look at the background. Now it's hard to tell whether or not he would have had a light on the background because you could get painted backdrops that give this effect that it has kind of a light. So this most likely, since he's using existing light on his model, this most likely is a painted backdrop. And you could go through any image that compels you. Uh, you could just kind of click on it and then take a closer look at the model and the overall image. On this one, uh, this was the Olympus M 45 millimeter uh, lens with a Pen F camera. F a 1.8, 1 800th of a second, ISO 500. And we, again, we could zoom in on her eyes and you could see it's a window. So again, existing light. Another thing I've noticed um, with his work, uh, the hair is often, uh, it kind of has movement to the hair and the hair is often very voluminous looking. And I would suspect he's using a light fan often uh, to just give some movement to the hair. And this model here again, you can see it looks like it, it actually is an open porch. It could be a large window or maybe a sliding door, um, glass sliding door, like, you know, back going off to a back deck of the house. That's what it appears to be there. So again, it's existing light. Um, this was with the Olympus OM-D EM5 Mark II camera with the Olympus 45 millimeter f1.8 lens. Shot at f2, 1 500th of a second, ISO 400. So it's very easy then to get an idea of what equipment they used, the settings for the exposure, and if you zoom in and look at the model's eyes for portraiture, you'll get a really good idea of what the lighting was. Now one photographer that I am very intrigued about and I enjoy uh, their work is this photographer. I should zoom up or scroll up. It's called Portraits by Sam. Now I don't know if Sam is male or female, um, but Portraits by Sam, I love their work. And you can see a lot of times, again, they have movement of hair, um, very tight shots. I, per, My personal style is I usually get in real tight. I like tight shots. A lot of dappled light. You can see dappled light here. And um, really, one of the things that really intrigued me about Sam's work is the light modifier they're using. If you look at this image with the dappled light, in this image, you can see it's got a very distinctive look to it, like kind of a uh, like a wagon wheel look uh, to the light. If you click on many of the images, you have this kind of very odd looking ring light on the model. And if you, you kind of compare real closely, it really is, I believe, this light. This is the light that's on they're using to get that look. And um, for this specific image, too, I should just to finish up, this was shot with a Canon EOS 60, uh, 100 millimeter f2.8 lens. It was shot at f4.5, 1 1 60th of a second, ISO 100. And I messaged um, portraits by Sam. Again, I'm not sure if it's a man or woman. And I mentioned that I'm a big fan of their work. And I asked them what light they possibly used uh, light modifier and they told me it was just a, a simple umbrella it was a very specific one and they um oops excuse me there it is uh they gave me the link and everything it's a dynasun ur02s uh professional studio reflective umbrella so my point is, many of these photographers are very open to sharing information. So don't be too shy of just messaging them on via 500px, asking them specific questions. I mean, the worst they could do is say no. And they were very nice. They even shared, you know, the exact umbrella used. Now, it's really odd looking at it that they got that kind of weird light that we're seeing. But um, I'm sure Sam would have no reason to lie. Uh, but 
um, and I couldn't find this in the um, U.S. Amazon store. It's, I only found it in the, or only link I had was to the Amazon um, U.K. store. So uh, there, you know, just message the photographers and ask them questions. And I'm sure if they have time, they'd be more than willing to let you know some of these secrets. Like I had no clue how Sam created that really unique ring light look on the model's face or in her eyes, I should say, but on her face overall. And um, they were nice enough to tell me. So check that out. Now, mainly we've been talking about, you know, portrait photography, but you could do stuff like this for landscape too. Uh, one uh, photographer I really like is Kova Tavakol, and I'm sure I'm mispronouncing his name. I love his work. But one of the things you'll find quite often is a lot of times the camera info will be there, but the exposure info won't. Um, let's just pick an image. Let's see this one. Like, yeah, this one has a uh, Canon EOS 5D Mark II, and they use the 24 to 105 f4 lens, but there's no exposure info. And I, that, that's usually not because the photographer isn't letting you know what the exposure info is. That's because quite often when you're um, working with an image, you'll often send it to an external application for noise reduction and sometimes send it to Photoshop. And whenever you're using plugins, a lot of times that exposure info gets stripped from the metadata. So when you upload the JPEG, you export a JPEG to a site like 500px, that info isn't there anymore, so, so it gets lost. So that's unfortunate. But you still could get an idea of the equipment they used, the lens they used, and so on, and the focal length uh, they used. Um, so it helps a lot, in, in, especially if you're just beginning and you're wondering what focal length to shoot at. Um, this image here is uh, I really like, and this has the exposure info. This was a Nikon D800E with a Nikon 24-70 f2.8 lens. It was at 55 mm, millimeters, f11, one-third of a second, ISO 320. So you could see very compelling, very beautiful image. So you get, you know, I recommend go to 500px. Again, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. Um, you could sign up for free, get a free account. Uh, I think you still, even if you don't even want to sign up, I still think you could look at other, you could look at images, I'm pretty sure. And just look and see what intrigues you. Then click on the image. Get an idea what camera equipment they used, what focal length, lens. If the exposure info is there, you'll have that too. If it's a portrait, zoom in, look at the eyes. Uh, look and see if there's hair movement. Get an idea. Maybe they used a fan to move the hair. Things like that. Look at the background. Was the background lit, do you think? Or do, was the background like a painted background? You, so you could really uh, reverse engineer an image and really get a lot of info that should help you down the line. Uh, like Take little parts of it to help it uh, help you develop your own style. And um, like I said, I think it works great. Uh, another thing I use 500px for is if I'm interested in purchasing a specific camera or lens, I will just go here and search for that lens or camera. And I'll get a, I don't know, a thousand examples of images shot with that camera and or lens, thousands of examples. So I could get an idea of how that camera performs, maybe in really low light, um, how it performs in really bright light, how the lens performs at different focal lengths, what it looks like, what the images look like, the clarity, the resolution, stuff like that. So if you're ever interested in investing in equipment, you could search for the equipment here and you'll get a lot of images returned to you that were shot using that equipment and give you a lot of, uh, you know, some just some real world, I guess, knowledge about whether or not the, the equipment is going to perform as you expect it to. So that's it. Just a really, you know, kind of a quick video explaining to you about you could, uh, how you could go about uh, deconstructing or reverse engineering a, a photo and how that could help you with your photography. <laughs>